putting these videos together, um, I'm realizing that I probably will be needing to add a couple of uh, things to the initial bullet list that you have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. We might end up with 10 things uh, or maybe subsets of some of these. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was file management. Now, like I said before, I, I, I'm making some assumptions that uh, people watching these videos uh, have already know, already know how to create a website, already are familiar with file management, already know the basics of web design and, and most of HTML, the good parts anyway. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on file management in this particular video, but I probably will come back and sort of fill in the gaps or wherever information may be missing. If, uh, if you click on the file management link that I have there, this takes you directly to GitHub help on how to manage some files. That being said, once again, you know, this it's going to be very similar to the way you would do it in a PC, even on a Mac, and everything it comes from a Unix friendly environment. I'm clicking back here, just double check some things. Uh, and also, to let you know, uh, when you're working on your web projects, I would recommend that you open up a new tab and uh, you go to your GitHub account, if I can spell it correctly, github.com. And I'm already signed in with the account that I made previously, the, uh, the TUTS IDT or the TUTS uh, IDT, yeah. And uh, when you first land on the GitHub page, even though I'm already signed in, you'll notice, well, it looks like a lot of nothing. And to the most, for the most part, yeah, there's a lot of nothing going on. It's uh, inviting you to explore GitHub. The repository is the important thing. I only have one. Uh, eventually, I, I have some accounts where I have 20 or plus uh, number of repositories. That's the place where it's not going to become really evident. I mean, github.com is all that shows on the address. But once I have to click on on my repository, the one that I know works, and then it takes me to the github.com slash tuts IDT. That's a good address to remember. Uh, and then slash, it's going to give me the uh, another directory structure where my repository actually lives, tuts idt.github.io. The other link that I would have open uh, would be that one, the uh, the one that corresponds to the website that we're actually publishing, your username.github.io. I'm going to copy that. I could also type it in in the address bar, open up a new tab, and paste this there, and go and visit. So I have my little page here, hello world, and my code. I know that this is a live page, and it's got the little code that I put in. Uh, and it all lives inside of this. Uh, now, when we are working on other projects, you know, you got 16 weeks in the year, maybe only eight. You're bound to have uh, eight or 16 or more or less projects. But you're going to be in need of some directories to start to grow this website. So uh, currently, like I said, if you consider that the, uh, the repository's name, as you see, colon, um, then you have your index page. You also want some additional folders to play with. Uh, you'll notice, though, that when you come into even in the help here, managing the files on GitHub, I don't know that there's necessarily a place where it says something right away directly about directories. But it's something that happens when you're creating files. I know for a fact that in my classes, I have uh, maybe 14 or 15 weeks of work. So I'm going to need at least a unit one folder and preferably a unit one through eight folder and then index files inside. And I know that some people like to have um, an index page. They like to have a CSS file. And they like to have an extra directory for images. And we can do all that. Images I'll show in another video. Uh, they're they're really simple too. So let me let me start by creating. I'll I'll create let's say an additional two folders with uh, some files inside. I will find the create new file. 
And although I am in the root folder, I don't need to be anywhere else. It tells me right there I'm in the root in touchidt.github.io slash. So anything that I type in here would actually be at the same level as the index page. But I want an index page that doesn't live in the same environment or rather in the same level as the main index page. I want to branch out into other things. So I'm going to create a folder that's called unit 01 out of eight or 16 or however many weeks I decide to have. So unit 01 is just sitting there. And although I am creating a new file, I'm actually creating the link to the new file because unit 01, it's not necessarily going to be a file. It could be, but it's not. I'm going to press another backslash. And then unit 1 has now been converted into a a potential directory. I say potential because I have not finalized this. I know that inside of all my units, I'm going to have at least one index page. So I'll have to say index.html and I'll press enter. That takes me straight into the, um, into the uh, editing environment. So I have this, this is what some people are asking. Well, how do you use Notepad? How do you edit your files? The, it's built into the page. This is a text editor. And uh, we'll be able to say, like I did in the previous page, uh, hello world or whatever else. Uh, let me just do a real quick, uh, clicky page here. And I'll just say P, give it a paragraph mark and say, this is unit one. And close the paragraph. And uh, I'll just for just for kicks here, I'll put another paragraph that says that maybe uh, I'll have here go home for now. Just home. I'll close that paragraph. And I've coded a simple page. I'll commit the new file. Uh, wait for it to save. So when you're saving, we actually I actually navigated to that folder by creating it. I am still inside of unit one. It gives me the opportunity to uh, navigate back to the root folder, which is tutsidt.github.io, and that's what happened. And now I have my tutsidt um, environment where my root has an index file that if I click on, it opens it up right away. It doesn't open directly to an edit mode. It actually needs to load it up, tell me what it is. It's showing it to me. And then I can click on the edit mode, edit this file with the pencil. And I can make changes if I wanted to say, well, eventually all of these things are going to have uh, a footer. And then uh, in further videos, I will be working with the semantic element. I'll just add a footer for kicks here. Well, I put it in the wrong place, but because I can edit, I can always just tell it to cut that and put it back where it belongs. I'll copy and I'll paste it. I open up the footer and I'll put in some, some note that says 2020, you know, as we tend to like to do copyright 2020 and then my name. Well, I'll put in my brand name, IDT prof and I'll close the footer. And why not just uh, make this a full paragraph as well? I'll copy that paragraph mark and add the tag at the end. And now I have somewhat more robust uh, file with a footer. I'll come back and commit the changes. Like I said, this tells me that I've updated it. I can do something else like uh, added footer tag and commit the changes. This will take me back to the GitHub environment. I mean, I've always been there, but it's going to take me back out away from the editor. I'm waiting for it to, um, to save. And I think that it's almost there. I need to click on the button. It hadn't loaded. And once I get the, the ready signal, which is this, I can then check out that my code has been updated. I can navigate back into the uh, root level and I can go into unit one, which I previously created. 
And here, if I wanted to have a CSS file, because that index for sure is going to have a CSS, I can create a new file in this level so that that CSS uh, can go in the same level as the index page. So I'm telling it to create the file. It already knows that I'm in unit one inside of the root folder. If for whatever reason I wanted to create a file in another in another unit, I could start to press the backspace. It takes me back to the unit one name, and I can change that to unit two and press slash. It then it's ready to accept the name of the next file, and I'll create another file here, index.html. I'm not going to get too fancy with this one because I plan to go back to the other one. It's, I'm just going to leave it blank. It's going to be just a, uh, a file to hold the space. It's uh, creating it and thinking about it, and that's done. I'm going to go back into the root level. I should now have two folders, one called unit one and the other one called unit two, and each one of them have an index file created on them. Notice how it tells us when these files are created. So it's been about four hours since I first created the uh, original site, but only four minutes since I created the unit one folder and only a few seconds since I did unit two. Copy and pasting is a little bit more complicated, but not impossible. Just I know that most folks are going to be working with web one and web two. And uh, as you get started, though, you're going to find that uh, I'll also be, that's another another topic to add. You will have access to GIST files, and uh, you're, you're going to be able to have some templates off to the side that you can just copy and paste and put into your new files. So I know that I'm going kind of fast with this, but I think that file management, if you're already familiar with it, this should not be too difficult. So um, what else can I tell you? Well. I told you that I would create another another file in here, and actually in both of them, I'll create the new file. Since it's already at this level on unit one, I'm going to create something called styles.css. Depending on your style of teaching, I know that I always name my files pretty much the same throughout the projects. Styles.css, unless we have multiple CSS files, it's going to be my go-to name. It's at the same level as the index file, and I can commit this file. And then that folder will have both the index and the CSS, the HTML and the styles sheet, or rather the files in the same folder. Whenever I get to the point where I'm doing some simple coding, I'll show you that the, uh, the image source uh, tags, you know, when you start to link files, they work exactly the same way as they would in any other system. It might only get a little bit different when we do images, and that's going to be uh, in its own in its own video coming up. If you have any questions about simple file management, which has just right now been creating files, notice that every time that you close and you navigate away from a file, because we're wor working online, everything gets saved right away. And if you want to rename, by the way, since this is file management, let's say that I, I did not want to name the styles, or rather this index page, index.html, I wanted to name it something else. Maybe you wanted to call it unit2.html. I will open up the file, and I'll see the content. And then it tells me that I'm the only one working on it. By the way, you'll be able to share these files. That's a whole different uh, topic, though. But it tells me that I am working on this. I am the one contributor. And I can edit it again. And this, instead of index, let's say that it was going to be a project about, I don't know, let's say about a bookstore. And so I will put in my, just some, some quick code here, HTML and uh, open up an H1, a header, and say bookstore. There's one thing that I don't like about Chromebooks is the keyboard there. Shift it a little bit to the right in position. That is bookstore site, and close the paragraph. Close the HTML. And then I'm done with it. But like I said, I don't want it to call it index. Instead, I want to call it uh, bookstore. So I 
just select what I want to delete. I'll delete it and I'll call this bookstore. And the other thing that I tend to do is to always keep my uh, my uh, my naming conventions in all lowercase. I try to avoid camel case even, especially when it comes to name files, uh, file names that is. And, uh, and that way I get a little bit less confused uh, as I'm working with the system. Hopefully your students can do the same thing and then that way it'll make it easier for everybody to navigate. I'll commit the changes as I do with everything else. And now my file has reflects the changes, HTML, bookstore, site, the HTML closes. I have an H, I open up an H1, but I close a paragraph, good going. Um, but you'll notice that the file name is now bookstore.html. I'll change this to a correct tag. I'll close the H1 and I commit the changes. So there's not really a way that I know to expand every single file name as you could maybe on a Macintosh, but uh, still it's pretty easy to navigate your way around. Unit one, unit two is created. They have, have those two folders in there. It tells me details about what's going on inside of those folders because of the comments I left behind. And my index at HTML is right where I left it. So. Like I said, all of this represents the C drive. The C drive uh, has on its root level, the index, and then we have two subdirectories, unit one and unit two, which each have their own files. So that's uh, a very brief overview and not even over, I mean, just a, a peek into file management using GitHub. If you have any questions about this, please uh, send me a message and, uh, It'll pro it, it, and I'll and I'll get back with you with uh, hopefully some good information, and uh, maybe if you know if, if the question is is so essential that I need to redo the video or create another one, I'll do that as well.